stop right there, Jackie. Christian, where's your body? You haven't seen a talking head before? No. Well, that is a, a talking head illusion, and the head can, can you talk, he oh head? Oh, yeah, sure. Say something? Sure. My name is Christian. And Jackie, before you leave today, your head's going to be on that platter. My head? Yes, your head. I'm not so sure. You, well, first of all, can you see his body? Take a look down below. See, can you see it? No, it's just all cloth. It's all gone. Yeah. And only his head is there. No. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Would you excuse us for a minute, Christian? Sure. Okay, come on up here so that you can understand the general idea. This is a simple trick that you can do sure. at home. Here is a rope, oh, and how many yeah. knots does it have in it? It has one knot. One knot. Okay, I'll take the rope with one knot and put it in this glass. Mm -hmm. See the rope going in? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Put it down like that. Now, you sure you counted the number of knots, right? I counted the number of knots. Okay. One knot. Look at that. One. Two. Three knots. How did you do it? I did it with my tight my with my fingers. I put it no, in. No, you there. couldn't have done that. Because yeah, it's a trick. Based on Tell the fact. Me how. Well, in the glass is a mirror. And this is how you can do the trick. A at mirror, home. yeah. You get a mirror and you yeah. cut it so that it'll fit inside the glass. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. Now anything you put in the front. Yeah, you can see, but anything yeah. that's behind the mirror, yeah. you won't be able to see. And this reflects as if it's the back part. Right, and it reflects as though yeah. it's the back part. So what, if, now, listen very carefully. Yeah. If you took two mirrors and you mm -hmm. put them like this, then this mirror would reflect this side, and this mirror would reflect that side, yeah. and anything you put behind the mirrors, you wouldn't be able to see. No. Okay, use that as a clue and tell me, where is Christian's body? Hey. Hmm? That means... That that's one mirror and that's another. Okay, and where where is the mirror now? Go ahead. You, the don't, one here. One one on that side, one right? Here. Okay, and on on the and other there's side. There's one here. And there's one over there, right? So that means and, it's just. And where is his body? Behind the mirrors. Right, and that's why I put this funny cloth here so it would reflect it. Yeah. You ready to come out, oh head? Sure. Okay, come on over here and give me a hand. Okay. Here's the. Oh. Plate that his head was sitting there. Here, you take yeah, that. It's half and half. Okay, Christian. Out you come. Right. See, there are the two mirrors. Yeah. Okay, and you ready? Okay, come on. yeah. You, you, it's my turn Christian, now, you take right? the two uh, sure. halves of the platter. And Jackie, come on around. Okay. Get, Get down here. on your knees. Yeah. Okay, here comes the top. Wait till I get her hair up here, Christy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Get as far forward as you can so we cover up that hole. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Now you can put the two halves of the platter there. Doesn't even hurt. Good. Put her hair like that and hold real still so you don't mm -hmm. separate the platter. There you go. Okay. Oh, now, oh, head, would you say something to us? Holy cow, this feels neat. Yes. So you look just like Christian did before. Yeah, it's sort of comfortable. Kind of comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Can you say something to us? Hi, my name's Jacqueline Chepri. Right. Better quit now while you're ahead, Jackie. <laughs>Darren, you know how to work one of these syringes? Yeah, I do. I see my mom beats turkeys with them. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you squeeze it. Squeeze it like that. And the air comes, comes out. All right. And then you put it underwater. Yeah. And the water comes in. You better leave it underwater when you go to fill it, though. Okay. Like that. Okay. And then what happens when and you squeeze it? And then when you squeeze it, it again. Careful, not too hard. When you squeeze it again, the water comes out. Right. Okay, now use, notice this is a strange syringe that has a bent tube there? Yeah. Well, the reason that bent tube is there is I have a challenge for you. I want to fill this glass partly with water, 
Now, you see where the water level is right there? Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is fill it the rest of the way. Oh, all right. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to try and add more water. Okay, how are you going to do it, though? I'm going to take water into the syringe, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try and put it into the cup. Okay. Okay, put that in there. Now you're going to squeeze and get the water out. Am I? Yeah. You, put oh. you added water, but it didn't go up. Yeah. Why? I'm not sure. Maybe because there's a vacuum in there that's holding... Well, why is the water, water level in the glass higher than the water level in the aquarium? Well, because there, there's something in there that's holding the water up. Yeah. In other words, there's air in here, right? Okay. And as the, as the water started to drop, it made the air pressure less here. So the outside air pressure, pressure pushing on the top of the water in the aquarium holds the water to that level. Oh, so I see. there's air in there. So how are you going to add more water? I'd have to get the air out. Okay. So now what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to squeeze it. Okay. And I'll take in the air okay. as I let it go. Okay. Put it up there. Now what? Ah, oh, it rose yeah. a bit. Yeah, Let's try okay. it again. Whoops. One oh. more should do it. Okay. There, there you we did go. It. That's a nice trick to sort of play on your friends because most people just don't think that when the glass is half full of water, it's also half full of air. And the only way to raise the water in the glass is get rid of the air. Okay. Lila, this is an oscilloscope. Have you ever played with an oscilloscope? Nope. Well, what do you think it means when you break down its name? What does oscillate mean? Um, it means to move back and forth. Mm -hmm. And scope? And means to see. Yeah. So this is a device that allows us to see waves. Oscilloscope. Yeah, because waves move back and move forth. Move back and forth. And engineers use them all the time. They adjust all these dials and they can make very, very precise uh, measurements and, and analysis of various kinds of uh, electromagnetic waves. You and I are going to use it to understand at least a little bit about how radio works. What do you do when you turn on a radio? Well, you move the slider and you move it so you're tuned to where the music comes out. Right, that's all. You just move that little dial back and forth. Actually, what you're doing is tuning in to a carrier frequency. You are now going to broadcast the entire world using this radio station right here. It looks like a microphone to me. Well, it is a microphone in the end, but inside here is a little transmitter. It's going to send out radio waves via this antenna. They're going through the air over here to this antenna, coming around over here to the wire, so you can see what you're transmitting over there on the oscilloscope screen. See that button right there? Yep. Okay, push it once. Okay. That's what you're transmitting. The little waves. Yes. Well, uh, little, little mountains. <laughs> mountains up and down. Though that is the carrier frequency. Now remember that, carrier, because that's important. Sure. That this particular uh, radio station is sending out. <clears throat> now, when you tune in your radio, Let's go down to the AM side. Okay. What is the smallest number on the AM dial? 55. Okay. Now, what you're really doing when you move the slider over to the 55 is tuning it at a zero. Okay. 550, 550 kilohertz, or thousands of cycles per second. Uh-huh. Okay. That's the frequency that's, that that radio station yeah. is transmitting on. What's the highest number? 160. No. 1,600. Right, 1,600. 1,600. Yeah, kilohertz, okay? Kilohertz. So each radio station has a specific carrier frequency assigned to it, and that's what you're doing when you move that little pointer up back and forth, is tuning to that carrier frequency. Okay, but that's oh. only, that, that's not now any information or sound or anything else, that's just the carrier frequency. Push the button again, and this time whistle. You see the little things going up and down mm -hmm. just a little bit? Okay. Okay, now. I did more that time. A little more. Well, with this knob over here, I can take those waves and squeeze them together so that we can get more information. And watch. You go ahead, whistle again. Okay. There. Now you can see what's happening to the carrier. Now stop they're for a minute. They're more close together. Oh, they're close together. When you push the button, first of all, here's just the plain carrier with a little noise on it at the moment. Right. When you whistle, the carrier is changed up and down and up and down and up and down like this in AM radio. And that information is sent out at the same time as it's going over the air and coming over here to the radio. So it's picking up the all noise? Those, all those little variations in your whistle. Oh. In fact, hold, hold it. I'll blow the whistle. Uh, that's a good, strong whistle. 
Got it over there? Yep. Loud. It's loud. And did you notice it was variations yeah. in, in the carrier frequency over there? Okay, well, that's just plain sort of simple sounds, plus you're talking. Go ahead and talk with us. Okay, I'm talking. Okay, I want to hold this over close. Go ahead and talk okay. into it. I'm he talking. Here's your voice. Say Mary had a little lamb. Okay. Mary had a little lamb. His place is white as snow. Okay. It's not moving very much because I guess my voice isn't loud enough or something. Well, that's probably true. Now, but you listen to music on the radio, don't you? Yeah. Okay, let's try some music and see what that like. You take the okay. television or the radio station there, get ready to hold the button, and I'll tune in. Can you imagine that orchestra from what you heard? Yeah. What were you listening to? Violins. Violins. Yeah, piano probably. Probably. The cellos. And flutes. Flutes. And well, assume a whole symphony orchestra. All the information, all the sounds from that symphony orchestra. On one little carrier are wave? Are on one little carrier wave going out over the air and are transferred. They get rid of the carrier wave here on the radio and transfer just that information finally to the speaker and, and they recreate, recreate the entire orchestra. Oh, yeah. it's, it's okay. complicated. Well, it is kind of complicated, and I think very marvelous, the idea that you can send that much information over one little carrier wave. Okay, yeah. so what is it that, we, that you do when you... I'll turn this back so we can see the carrier wave again. What is it that you do when you tune into a radio station? You tune the carrier wave so that it picks up the right notes and Well, you're tuning into in the carrier voice. wave of the station. Yeah. And on top of the carrier wave is what? The, the music. All that information. Yeah. Very good. Okay, okay, so now you've played with an oscilloscope tuning into a carrier wave of a radio station. You're a better whistler than I am. <laughs> Laura, you see all these strange colored shapes I have here on the desk? Yes. What are they? Well, they're a test to see how good you are at looking at a two-dimensional figure and imagining what it would be like when it was in three dimensions. And this is the sort of thing, uh, the ability that architects and engineers have to do when they look at a blueprint and then have to try to imagine what it would be like when it's not finally constructed. And what these are, or some of them at least, are cubes that have been opened up. You know what a cube is? Yes. What is a cube? It's a three-dimensional box. Square. It has six sides. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, each one of these has six sides. But the problem is you have to imagine when you fold it along these dotted lines and you fold it all up, will it end up to be a cube? What do you think about this one? Yeah, I think it will. Okay, let's fold okay. it. Okay. Yeah. In school, we had to do this, too. Okay. And this was one of the shapes that we came up with. That's definitely a cube. Yeah. Okay, very good. How about that one? Six sides again. What is it going to be like when you fold it all up? Will it I think end up? that one will be a cube. Too. Do you think it will be a cube? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one's a cube Definitely too. Definitely a cube also. All right, very good. How about this one? Mm. Six sides again. I think that one will be a cube too. Okay. Oopsie, that one's not a cube. So it hasn't got any bottom. No, it hasn't got any bottom, so it's not a real cube. The bottom was up on the same side. If that had been over there, it would have been a cube, right? Right. Okay, we have one more. Hmm. Is that going to be folded into a cube or not? No, 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 fold it, don't fold it. You're doing, you have to do that with your, with your imagination um, and your mind. Imagine this one coming up and that yeah, one coming Yeah, I think that one would be. You think that's going to be a cube? Okay, let's yeah. try it. Let's see. Like that. Yeah, that's a cube. Aha, that's a cube. Well, you were very good. You only missed one. So I think you'll make a good engineer or architect someday. I think so, too. Good. But I'm not sure I want to be one. <laughs> well, anyway, if you wanted to be one, you'd be a good one. True. <laughs> <laughs> This common mystery object that looks like a desert landscape was once quite different. For one thing, there was considerable moisture below the surface. 
but it was subjected to heat over a period of time. Physical and chemical changes occurred, much of the moisture was driven off, and a crust formed at the surface. That's what you want to happen when you bake cookies. <laughs> Christian, have you ever put a new handle on a hammer or an axe or a hatchet or anything? No. Well, there are two systems. One is to put the new handle in like this, and then hit, hit it like this, or the other is to wrap it like this against something hard. Now, because this one's already got a, head on, or a handle on it, here is my version of it. This is the head of the axe or the, or the hatchet, and this is the handle. So we stick it in here like this. So you, first of all, take the hammer, you hit the end like that, but you hold it, so in case you miss. Okay, stop once. Look. So you wouldn't drove it, it right through. Wouldn't it go down? Because this is heavy and it should go down. Well, you'd think so, but you remember, I think you and I talked about a thing called inertia. I can remember you the remember, word. You remember the word? Know. Well, what the word means is that it's the property of an object when it's still, it will tend to remain at rest or still like that unless it's moved by something. Or if it's moving, it will tend to continue to move unless something stops it. So, and the more mass something has, the more inertia. In fact, that's how they define mass. So I'll do it this time and you watch what happens. This has mass and inertia. When I hit this, I'm gonna make that handle move. But this one... That will continue to stay. St watch. If I do it this way, you'll see it even more, watch. See how, it, if I put my hand on the other side, watch. This looks like it's moving up, right? But really, it's this is moving through. Right, and it's staying still, okay. Because it was still. Right, now do you remember, <clears throat> the other system was to wrap it like this, okay? Yes. If we did the same thing here, watch. This time this is moving and I suddenly make this still, then what happens to this? It moves down. It continues to move, right. So that's the old principle of inertia. And using that idea, we can do kind of a nice trick. Here's an apple and a big knife that's nice and sharp, so be careful. I'll get it sp started that way. You take this piece of wood. What I'd like you to do now is to hit the, uh, the knife right there. But wait, tell me first, what's gonna happen? Well, since this is staying right there, yeah. and I'm going to force this to move, this will stay, and that will slice it in half. Right. It, should slice it right in half. Okay, okay, go ahead. Well, the other part fell on the floor, so here, have a piece of apple. Thanks. This black bear cub was found abandoned and was reported to the Inland Fisheries and Wildlife Department for the state of Maine. After an examination, such orphans would usually be turned over to a zoo, but not this cub. He'll be placed with a new mother bear as part of an unusual program of bear research. For 10 years, biologists from the Wildlife Department have been keeping tabs on the bear population of the state. When the weather allows, they do their work from the air since much of the northern part of the state has no public roads. The antenna under the wing picks up the signal from radio transmitters in special collars that have been placed on more than 50 bears. Each summer, a few more bears are added to the program by catching them with a snare. A drug is loaded on a long pole called a jab stick, which allows the biologist to safely inject the drug before the bear can get loose. When the drug takes effect, the team can safely handle the bear. Two methods are used to identify a bear. These ear tags are one. Another is to tattoo a number on the inside of the bear's mouth. They take the bear's measurements as well as blood samples for other scientists to investigate how bears can survive their winter sleep when their kidneys do not remove wastes from their blood. Finally, all measuring and weighing is done and the radio collar is put on. Soon, the bear will be back to normal, unharmed by the experience. Because so many bears have been fitted with radio collars, the biologist can take the orphan cub to the location of a hibernating female. The cub is kept warm inside the scientist's jacket. With the radio tracking gear, they can pinpoint the mother bear's den. When they find it, 
they place the orphan inside. The bear cubs remain awake during the winter to nurse from the sleeping mother. They check to see that the cub is okay before they leave. At the lab, there's lots of work to do during the winter, examining teeth taken from bears killed by hunters, for instance. From a thin section of tooth, the biologist can accurately determine the bear's age. This information helps to get a better picture of the state's total bear population. Now, however, it's time to check up on the orphan cub to see how well he's doing. The same procedure is followed. A jab stick is prepared, and they dig through the snow to get to the den. After injecting the mother, she's hauled out and placed on a thick blanket to keep her warm. Inside, two cubs are awake. One is the orphan. The red ear tags identify him. They note that he's gained weight, meaning that he's been accepted in the den and has been feeding normally. After being checked in the usual way, the mother is taken back into the den to join her cubs. So far, several orphan cubs have been placed with foster mothers. It's all in a day's work for the biologists and volunteers in Maine's unusual bear research program. Have you ever gone hunting for treasure, Darren? No, I haven't. Well, here's your chance now with a metal detector. First, you better understand how it works. See that old knob? Turn, turn it on. OK. All the way. OK, now turn it off. And what you're doing is to adjusting the, the electricity in here. There's a battery in here. Okay. That sends a signal down here through a wire down here to a coil. And that sends a signal outside here, kind of through the ground. Mm -hmm. When you adjust the, the little knob up there, you're adjusting an internal signal so that they just balance. Oh, it's the one that's on the inside that right. balances it out. So when you get to a nice piece of metal, like this washer, oh, I see. See? it throws this external thing out of balance and that makes the whole thing buzz. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, now you have to work. Turn it all the way up until it buzzes. Okay. Now back it off just a little bit. Okay. Now slowly sweep over the ground, see what you can find. Okay. I think there's something right there. Right there. Okay. There it is. Ah, it's a quarter. Quarters. Fine. Keep it. Oh. You found it. All right. Thanks. I'll have to admit that I put it there with the hopes that you'd be able to find it. Oh, well, now, thank you. Now, if I may make a suggestion, work your way down this way. All right. Whoops. Ooh, something Looks good like down there, right? That hole. Oh, there it is. Hey, it's made of glass. How come you picked it up with a metal detector? Well, there's a metal top. Right. Did you plant this? Yeah, I certainly did. What does it say? It says, return to Mr. Wizard. Reward. So what's the reward? Uh, the reward, Darren, is you can keep the metal detector for a whole week, and any treasure you can find, you can keep. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now now you have to work. Turn it all the way up until it buzzes. Okay. Now back it off. Just a 